today i welcome you guys to the first lecture or the first module of the uh, analytics course the uh, analyt uh, applied analytics uh, which is a practitioner's approach in descriptive prescriptive and predictive analytics so we will see how this uh, um, this course is contains a lot of materials and we will try to cover them as quickly as possible and we will try to cover this from the applied side mostly focusing towards what industry is currently looking for so today is kind of the introduction topic and we will try to cover the major aspects of it so the first place where we actually want to start is the question about data mining and data analytics these are two terms that a lot of people use interchangeably uh, they uh, look at it so we can say these as the interchangeable usage but they are different okay in this regard should be very clear that both data mining and data analytics are different things okay so uh, but people do use them interchangeably so the question is are they the same the answer is no they are not the same okay not the same first part so what is data mining uh, this was something uh, like uh, started in early 80s okay i mean 1980s and what it is is the its goal is to extract you have to extract knowledge from data knowledge from data so your aim is to extract knowledge from data so um, data of you can say multiple sources or from different locations you get data and then this data from different sources is looked for is uh, studied or mined okay so here is mining happens on this data from various sources to extract knowledge so what do we mean by knowledge here okay the term knowledge in this case okay we can define this okay we define it in the context of our analytics course we kind of define as what do we define as specific or interesting talking about specific or interesting patterns okay patterns from where patterns from the data uh, that are valid these patterns are valid they are unique and they are useful to whom the organization organization or the you can talk about it as the decision maker so here we are talking about specific or interesting patterns that these patterns where do you get them these patterns are obtained from the data and what are the characteristics of these patterns they are valid they are unique and useful to the organization or the decision maker okay the important part is the usefulness of the knowledge of the knowledge okay whether it is useful to the organization or not it is depends it depends on the usage on the final usage and expert opinion opinion all right so the expert who is dealing with this knowledge that is obtained from the data depends on the final usage of this uh, knowledge and the expert decides whether this is useful or not in other words other words l or the feedback from expert 
is used to refine the knowledge discovery process. Okay. So, here what we are talking about it is whatever the feedback the expert gives about the usefulness of the knowledge or whether it is uh, valid, unique and useful to the organization, that feedback, this feedback from the expert is taken and used to refine the knowledge discovery process or the data mining process. So, this data mining to a large extent is about looking for interesting patterns from the data, that is the data uh, mining aspect. So, what is data analytics? This became popular in 2000s, so about 20 years later, okay, 20 years after the data mining. So, data mining came first, okay. So, remember data mining, mining was in early 1980s, okay. So, you are talking about 2000s. Okay. There are many definitions out of this, okay. lot of definitions and viewpoints about it. What we are going to present here is the, uh, the industrial, the industry viewpoint. Industry viewpoint, what is it? The industry views undertakes as a decision support tool. This is a tool that we use for supporting the decision making process, okay. Or here you are saying support the decision making process of the uh, organization. So, uh, the main thing is in a decision making support, the thing that difference, so the main differentiator, differentiator is analytics starts with a question, with a decision making question. And uses tools to find answer or answers to the this question. So, you have a decision making question and you want to use various tools to find answers to this question. So, the major differentiator is in mining you do not really know what the data is about or what the uh, there is no question, you are just looking for interesting patterns. Whereas, in data analytics, you have a specific question as a decision maker and you are using the data to find answer to the question. The classic definition of this, of analytics, okay, it kind of mentions that it is actually an application of uh, computers to analyze so, the application of the computers to analyze large data sets, okay. This is important, you are looking at specifically large data sets, large data sets um, to obtain instead of the patterns, you are looking for evidence here to obtain evidence in support or refute of the hypothesis, okay. So, the new term here is evidence in support, okay, or evidence, not in support evidence. So, it is a process of analyzing large data set where you are looking for evidence to either support or refute, okay, support or oppose the hypothesis. Hypothesis, this is actually the uh, decision making question. What is hypothesis? It is a decision making question or what some people also call this. For this course, we can also take hypothesis, we can equate it to equivalent to an idea 
or you can equate it to a belief or a or a hunch even okay like a mental idea you get a hunch okay so there are many ways you can think about it so the decision maker have an hunch or an idea or a hypothesis or a belief to which he is going to use a large set of data tools and he uses computer to, various computer tools to analyze these data tools to find evidence in support or refute of this hypothesis that is the major difference between analytics and uh, 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 data mining and um, other aspect of this is also some people also say that analytics you know they look at it the the, the process view of analytics What is the process view of analytics? Uh, so it's a so you'll we'll say it's a process in which what are you doing? Computational tools are used to discover insights. So it's a process in which you are using computational tools to discover insights from the data data uh, that can influence decisions so the insights here are more towards influencing the decision or the question so it's a process in which computational tools are used to discover the insights from the data to the so that the decision maker the decision can be influenced or the initial question of the decision maker can be answered. So the most important aspect is we start with a hypothesis in the data analytics, whereas in data mining there is literally no hypothesis as such. Okay? So from this we move now to the major concept is the data okay? and data as such it is a widely used term in various contexts. Okay. Here we are using it for our uh, discussion, we need to remember this very clearly, is for the uh, applied analytics side okay. or what we call as the industry analytics. Okay. So, for the data of this course, we are predominantly focusing on large data sets. I mean, you know, both, it is large both in content, you can talk about it as size and diversity. Okay. People talk about big data and we really do not like that term actually. You can rather talk about as large divergent data or instead of divergent large and diverse data. So, uh, diverse amount of information is available and the, there is large amount of it. Okay. So, some of the examples of data that will be dealing in this cla class will be industrial process data. So, what is an industrial process data? It is typically a large amount of data, it is a large amount of data of acquired stored and processed data, data uh, to that is used to automate and control industrial production. Uh, manufacturing or logistics, supply chain, etc. Okay. So, you have a large amount of acquired stored and record process data that is used to automate and control the industrial production, logistics and supply chain because typically you are dealing with the processes of the industry, industry processes. The main aim, the aim of this is to uh, realize process optimization, process optimization so that 
better competitive advantage competitive advantage is realized. So, you are talking about reaching optimization, the main aim here is optimization. So, when you have large scale of industrial data which is stored and processed data, which is acquired, stored and processed data, it is used for automate and control the industrial production, logistics, supply chain, etc. with the main aim of realizing process optimization. Then there is something called as a business data which is mostly called as business performance data and why is it used and this data is analyzed analyzed to understand understand and drive business performance performance so the aim here is analyze so that you can drive the business performance that's the most important aspect of it okay so the major things the the domains here where are these data applicable to the domains is like customers sales marketing okay uh, portfolio uh, financials risks etc so these are the major domains in which business data is used so where you are looking at driving performance so if in the case of customers you will be talking about increasing the number of customers sales obviously increasing the number of sales or the volume of sales or the amount of sales marketing is how to do effectively do marketing of the product portfolio is what are the product portfolios you need to carry and financials will be like what is the cheap best way of obtaining maximum money out of what we have the best way to investment how to reduce the risk in the industry etc so these are the aspects of the business data so the main aim is dry business performance then the third part is structured and text and structured data that we talk about it is the main aim is to do analysis to filter search extract uh, and structure information so, here most of the time we are talking about text search and other things and sources like we have data sources like uh, documents, text documents, okay. we have electronic messages, we have web documents and we have web databases, okay. sometimes also people call us deep web this not uh, new term. So, here we are talking about data from these kind of sources like documents, electronic messages, web documents, web databases, etc. is then filtered, searched and extracted. So, and a classic example of this is if you go to the web, um, the website of Amazon and you search for something amazon.com and you search for a product and then you get similar searches it is called as market basket analysis okay which is a, a new analytics tool and the aim here is using the text data that you're using for searching your particular product it's able to show you what similar other processes are available similarly the image data is you know uh, ana analyze uh, data from various image sensors you have both 2d and 3d images all right and what are you why are you analyzing you are analyzing to find is basically find and recognize objects okay then you are also trying to classify the scenes scenes uh, relate to other information. So, if somebody says okay here is a traffic jam that is going on in a particular part of the uh, road and then you have a unmanned aerial vehicle that is flying on the top of it and you get the image data and if you see that there is a huge crowding of vehicles in a particular place and yes that corroborates the claim that there is a traffic jam and then you can also use the data to find out what are the best or most efficient ways to uh, clean the jam.
So, that type of analysis is also real time analysis is also possible with this. Now, we talk about there are data analytics, there are many different views. I, we kind of talked about um, analytics and why is the hypothesis an important aspect of analytics. But main aspect of it is we said that it can affect or influence decisions. Okay. So, the, the aim of the analytics, aim of analytics is to gain insights or you can say these insights uh, they are relevant insights insights okay uh, that can affect the decisions that is the plan okay. So, the aim of analytics is to gain insights from the data. So, these insights are from the data okay. Then these insights can affect the decisions and typically what is data? Uh, there are many ways people define data and we also have seen different ways of data. But we, in this course, we took at data as a is a measure of historic information, okay. So, you are kind of saying that is something we are measuring the historic information of this, which implies analytics examines historic data. Okay. So, an examination of the historic data can also be told as analytics. Why are you examining this? To answer a specific question of decision maker or you can instead of this question you can use the words like idea, hypothesis etcetera. So, you analyze his or you examine historic data to answer a specific question of the decision maker. So, the, the funniest part is when the organization started to collect more data then what happened? So, when you start collect more data and store it. So, collect and store data. Certain people call this as business intelligence. It is a terminology, let us not worry about too much about it. Uh, let us say that the organizations are collecting and storing data. When you have that, then all you have is a natural tendency, natural tendency to use this data, use this data to develop estimates, okay, forecasts, okay, etcetera. Uh, for why? Improve efficiency of decision making. So, the process started by organizations starting to store data. So, historically if you look at it in 1980s, okay, storage was expensive, okay. When we reached the 2000s, okay, storage became cheaper, very cheap. So, when the organization started to store a lot of data, the natural tendency of use this data to develop estimate forecast. The aim, ultimate aim is to improve the decision efficiency of the decision making process, right. So, there are many terms in the meantime that, that came out of this and these terms like, you know, cybernetics, data analysis, neural nets or neural networks, okay. Then you have pattern recognition, recognition, right. Then you have knowledge discovery, okay. Then you have something called as data science, okay, etcetera. There are many terms that are used loosely in this regard. We use all these terms into different aspects of this. And the main aim is again, as I said earlier. This started with the process of collecting more data. Once we started collecting large amount of data, then we had a natural tendency to do use the data to improve your efficiency of the decision making process. 
in which so this historic data amounts to providing new tools for uh, data analytics okay and we now talk about something called decisions or something called as decision making okay which is an important this is a very important step important aspect of uh, industry okay you are making a lot of de decisions and the main aim of industry is to make let's assume that's the main aim is here in this case is make profit or improve efficiency okay if you are a non profit organization then you would definitely want to improve your efficiency otherwise make profit okay that means you have to make more money so that you can do better business so the one of the aim is you should be able to make the right decisions or the some people call it as right decisions we or call it as the rational decisions make and implement rational decisions okay and what are rational decisions or what are these right decisions okay we kind of using this term right decision here on rational decisions interchangeably but they are different uh, in the semantics in the or the, the, the for the uh, meaning of the word but what we are going to do, talk about here is the decisions that are for the industry when you making the decisions they should be data driven data driven means decisions based on verifiable facts and valid assumptions okay so for example is if you are if you are somebody ask you what is going to be the production of wheat in india for the next year you would probably look at the last 10 years production of wheat and from there we would generate a uh, forecast for the next year and we assume maybe or the assumptions provided will be like we will have a normal monsoon or 80% monsoon 90% monsoon but if we make a production estimate and say that the monsoon will double next year probably that assumption will not be a valid assumption so you have a valid assumption assumption is kind of valid as far as we are concerned okay and then we also have verifiable facts so that is one aspect of the uh, rational decision process second one is what we call as it should be transparent transparent means there should be a clearly defined should be a clearly defined and articulated clearly defined and articulated uh, decision criteria the criteria that you are using to make the decision that should be clearly defined and articulated you can't make a whimsical design it should be based on the so it should be data driven and from there once you have the data when you have the verifiable facts and valid assumption then your decision making criteria should be clearly articulated and once that it is done you also should have what you call as a verifiability that means the model that you use in making the decision model used for making decision making the decision what decision the rational decision okay uh, it should connect it should connect uh, the options to the decision criteria so the criteria that you used the transparent criteria transparency part that you used it should connect with the option whatever the choice you are going to make as the decision that is important here okay now the robustness the last part of the robustness it is that means the decision the rational decision should also account for and eliminate if you can't completely eliminate minimize okay minimize the bias okay bias or uh bias why do we eliminate or reduce the bias so that decision will hold good for reasonable uh, range of decision criteria 
you say that this decision will work at 100 degree Celsius and you can say this will not work at 101 degree Celsius, then it might not be a really good decision. Uh, so, you probably say that okay, fine we designed a particular part that should work at 100 degrees plus or minus 1 degree and you, you somebody says it's, I can do it at plus or minus 5 degree, then obviously the customer would prefer this because you have a wider range of temperature within which the product will work. So, that is the idea ok, uh, well it is also it is just a very loose example, but still you can understand that the range you should also be the decision the if, if it works on a larger wider range and the decision holds good it is typically called as a robust decision as well ok. Now, there are certain phases of data analytics, uh, data analytics is done in this you can think about the entire processes into these four phases, the assessment and the selection being the first phase cleaning and filtration the second phase, visualization and analysis the third phase and interpretation and evaluation the, uh, the fourth phase. So, if you talk about the assessment phase, the first phase ok, what is it about is it is basically amounts to the understanding, understanding ok, understanding of the business process. that generated the generated the data ok. So, the first part is it amounts to understanding the business process that generated the data, then what does it amounts to? It also then understand the data itself, the data itself, itself uh, to decide whether all of it or a portion is relevant for the decision question in hand. So, here we are assuming that for this aspect, this particular aspect we are talking about first part is understand the business process that is assessment ok. When you are assessing that part you are understanding the business process from where the data was generated and from there once you understand the business process then you are going to decide what part of the data whether the whole data or a subset of it should be used for uh, deciding whether the decision should be made on what whether it fits the decision criteria the question in hand or this is your hypothesis ok. Then you have the second part which is called as the cleaning and the filtration, where this is a mostly the data preparation step, preparation happens here. So, what do we do? This also known as data stewardship. ok. And what do we do is here you kind of clean the data. So, here is like you know uh, if there is missing values or there are errors in the data all those kind of things are done there. And then you filter the data in such a way that you extract relevant stuff. You filter it so that whatever is needed because the data might be very large, but you would only require a small aspect of it. So, you take that and you do this. Some type th usually uses some descriptive analytics tools. So, in the second phase, we have the usage of certain descriptive analytic tools, we will see that later in the uh, in the course ok. Then also we talk about the visualization, if you talk about visualization, the third step being visualization and analysis ok, this is our third step. So, what are we doing here? The visualization and analysis is it involves descriptive analytics ok. Uh, so, this is used for uh, initial modeling 
okay, or building the models. Then we have is the uh, predictive analytics. Okay, which is used for you know use the historic data data for future estimates and prescriptive analytics analytics where what we are talking about is unstructured problems okay how do we model them and analyze that or unstructured problems or questions decision questions okay so that kind of things so somebody says how can i double the profit in the next year that's kind of a very unstructured question which might require a lot of analyzing lot of different aspects of it so the visualization is first looking at the data visually finding out using of uh, visual tools to see patterns trends, behavior, etc. Okay. So, that what happens is with this you get the initial model, initial model from which using that model then you use the analysis from where you derive the uh, advanced model that provide the relevant what are we looking at relevant insight okay so that part gets out comes here then we what have the last step which is called as interpretation interpretation and evaluation okay so what are we doing here we are interpreting and evaluating so here the insights developed okay developed are interpreted with respect to to the initial question initial hypothesis or question okay we are doing that uh, what why are we doing this so that appropriate decision is resulted appropriate decision is made so, you are interpreting the uh, insights that are developed so that the appropriateness of the decision is made. So, that is where the evaluation. So, this is also called as alternative analysis as well. Okay. We will see all of this in the later classes in a much bigger way, but we are trying to talk about the major steps of this. And now, we talk about something, the last part which is called as the um, hypothesis, which is also an important aspect of this. And uh, uh, we mentioned hypothesis, hypothesis, hypothesis. Some people call this in simple ways as a belief. Some people call this as an idea. Some people call this as a hunch. You, it does not matter what you are going to call. But in statistics, it is considered as, a, as an assumption in stats. So, statistics consider the hypothesis as an assumption okay so it's based on something it is based on some information that is available to you in the applied analytics in analysis or in analytics we kind of call this the loose term the loose term is idea okay or some people have a also call it as a feeling of a problem Uh, so, this usually comes from the prior experience and other things. So, if you think about it, the way we think about this as, if you think about this as your thought plane, okay, this credit goes to this idea of this actually goes to Professor Shoji Shiba uh, from Japan. So, you think about two parallel lines, one is the thought plane and the another is the fact or the data plane, okay. Think about there is a fact, then there is a thought. At some point of time, somewhere, as the time progresses, you think about here is the time is going like this. Some point of time, you get a feeling someplace, okay, some particular instance. So, this is where a feeling of a problem or an idea of a problem. 
from there once you have that then you move yourself to the data plane with the process called explore okay explore to see whether the problem the feeling about the problem is right and then you look for what you call as relevant data okay. you travel in time and you try to find relevant data once you have that once you are convinced by this stuff then you go up again back to the thought pl plane by something a process called formulate you are formulating this and what you are doing is the formulation in the thought process along with the data you end up defining the problem okay so once you define the problem then you again move back to the data plane and you start collect collecting the data okay so somewhere here in this much aspects is where you can think about the hypothesis concepts comes into picture okay you have some prior experience and you had a gut feeling from there you explored with the relevant data and you formulated so this is where the specific question arises okay then from there this aspect this gives you the hypothesis okay so we hope this makes sense to you and to an extent so we conclude this lecture right here and the basic concepts of the uh, analytics uh, is being explained to you and from tomorrow onwards we will start to get into different aspects of it different types of data and other details of it and how we can use statistics to do this um, so in the meantime uh, continue your learning and uh, have fun while you are learning. Thank you.